it's, it's really nice to be here at Town Meeting TV. Um, I'm Jennifer Green, and I'm here with my colleague, Ita Menno. Um, I'm the Director of Sustainability and Workforce Development for the City of Burlington. I'm housed at the Electric Department, where we're working to transition away from fossil fuels, get off natural gas, et cetera, in the ground transportation and building sectors. And really happy to have Ita on the team. Ita. So glad to be here. Thanks, Jen. Um, my name is Ita Menno Baker. Um, I use they, them pronouns. I have been with Burlington Electric, uh, the Burlington Electric Department now for a little over a year. And we're really excited, excited to take some time to share with folks the work that we're, we've been doing um, and the work that we want to be doing to really consider um, how BED um, and the role that, it, how BED plays a role in uh, equity and accessibility for Burlington. Yeah, and I, I say this all the time, Ita, I should probably confirm it, but I think Ita is the first project and equity analyst in any utility in the country. I, I mean, it's really exciting that we're, we're really focused on ensuring that all Burlingtonians, regardless of sort of what language you speak at home, whether you own or rent, sort of who you are, you can, you can access Burlington Electric Services. And so having ETA on board is, is a huge asset for the department. And I'm personally sort of really proud and really proud to be working with ETA. Um, we were gonna kick off by just mentioning that this is the first of a series. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at doing this quarterly and talking about sort of all things, sort of electric energy, et cetera, but really with an underlying focus on equity. Um, so it seems like it's fitting today that we really focus on you, Ita, and your work in the community. And like as we were saying just before we got started, um, your role is sort of literally and figuratively meeting people where they are. Um, so when we talk about sort of literally meeting people, you are like really in the community. Can, can you talk yeah, about that? Absolutely. I, I was really excited to get boots on the ground shortly after I started, but in the last year we've spent, I've spent time at, um, at a couple of different laundromats, but mostly at the King Street laundromat. Um, I've spent time at community gardens. Um, I've spent time at uh, the Old North End Community Center, mostly at the family room, but I've started to spend time at, a, a, at the Association of Africans Living in Vermont recently. Um, I've spent time at community rooms at different um, housing locations, such as the Bobbin Mill, such as Riverside um, Community Center and Franklin Square. Um, and I've spent time door knocking, which is something I haven't done in a really long time, but it's been um, really fun uh, working, finding ways to get people engaged in a conversation about, um, about energy in their homes, uh, personal energy conservation and um, how they see a future of the Burlington Electric Department um, for them. It's been beautiful. Um, I have been spending, um, a, I have office hours for folks interested um, once a week at the King Street Laundromat. It's on, uh, it's on Lower King Street. Um, from in the afternoon, about 2.30 or 3 is usually when I get there. Um, and I picked a laundromat um, because uh, most of the time, the people who go to particular neighborhood laundromats are people from those neighborhoods. And um, I haven't met anyone that's gone to that laundromat that didn't come within a three, maybe max five block uh, radius of that particular laundromat. We know there's a lot of people in the community that don't have uh, laundry facilities in their buildings or in their homes. And so having people come to a central location to meet each other um, and to and to maybe even get questions answered about their electric bill or, or their particular electric use um, has been, I think, a really beautiful tool. Mostly people don't ask me questions about my electric bill, but I still have work to do. So having office hours in a place and availability um, for folks has been, I think, um, incredibly helpful. And um, not challenging, it doesn't challenge other people's use of the space um, as well. So that's been a beautiful thing. I think that, um, I think that 
that is the laundromat in, that I chose in particular because Andrew um, has done uh, a lot of work to make it a community resource. Andrew's the owner. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I know when you came back after your first visit, I think you said, you know, we've got to get some stuff translated. And I know Kevin was going to pull up a flyer so we could see some of the some of Eats' early work um, done in conjunction with um, our colleagues in the communications uh, department over at BED. And essentially, sort of really basic stuff. Um, do you need help? And this is what we can do. So how many languages do we make this available in ETA? This is available in eight languages other than English. So nine languages total, including Arabic. And what this is saying is that we have a, a discount or credit available to, to um, income qualifying residents of Burlington. We realized early on that you know, uh, any English speaker who saw this, who read, who, any English speaker who could read was able to access um, this particular discount if they were qualifying. And But there's so many people who aren't able to do it. So we wanted to make sure at least the top um, eight languages other than English that are, are uh, read, this was translated to those languages. But 12.5% that's not a that's not a small amount on your electric bill. Our partners over at Vermont Gas have a similar credit on their gas bills. And so we know there are households in Burlington that can qualify that have already been qualified for their gas bill. If you qualified for a discount on your gas bill, you'll qualify for a discount on your electric bill. So just give us a call. Um, and we'll we'll help you out. Give me a call, and I'll I'll help you out. But again, I also show up in the community, come to the uh, King Street Laundromat on Monday afternoons. Yeah, that's really I, I love this flyer, Ita, because you know we talk about the importance of translating, but mm -hmm. like, people get stymied and they have a hard time like making it happen. And I know one of the key partners that you worked with to ensure that it was translated well in a sort of culturally competent way was. Um, the Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity. So I know you're partnering with a lot of um, entities too. Do you want to talk a little bit more about CVOEO and your sure, work with them? I love that. Yeah, we have a lot of different partners. And like you mentioned, um, one that we've been working with a lot lately is the um, Office of Racial Equity and Community Inclusion over at the at, over at CVOEO. Um, we are partnering with uh, Virginie and Pacific and Shefera over there to, to kind of help us prioritize what some of the um, feedback that we've gotten from the community is so that not only does it help um, the people that I'm seeing on a regular basis and, and the people that our customer care team are seeing on a regular basis, but it also benefits the folks that are coming into CVOEO um, to make sure that, um, that people are getting what they need. We, we know and we, we know absolutely that when um, that when uh, financial times are hard, it's often your utility bill that's paid last. We don't want to. We want to decrease the burden as much as possible. So, if folks have ideas about how that can happen. Please let us know. We also know that um, that if you uh, can qualify for this uh, twelve and a half percent discount, please uh, apply for it and and uh, and have that added onto your account. Yeah, that's really great because, I mean, one thing we know, it's easy to, to sort of talk about this program and project, but unless people actually know how to access it, it's meaningless, right? Absolutely. Um, that QR code will take you to the, to the application, and if you need help um, with language, um, our, with language translation services, let, we'll, we'll work to, to make sure that that happens for you. Yeah, thanks, Ita. And on a similar note, maybe even taking a step back, is what you learned in the community just about the electric bill overall. And is it clear and understandable to folks? Now, of course, um, Burlington Ele Electric isn't, we've talked about this, you know, we're a regulated utility. So, you know, there's certain things we have to say on the bill, you know, certain things we have to make clear, but clear to whom and how can we do it in a better way. So. Maybe we can transition to the video now and you can talk about that. Sure. Um, one of the first, I spent most of my time listening in the first six to nine months that I was at the Burlington Electric Department. And what I learned was folks don't, folks were having a hard time 
understanding what they were getting in the mail. This, this utility bill, they would unfold it. There's lots of words, there's lots of numbers, and, a lots, and, um, it, and it was in language that, that uh, people were pretty unfamiliar with. Like I think that, um, that when you're in the business, it's really easy for us to forget that not everybody knows what a kilowatt hour is and what that means on your bill and, and things like that. So what we've um, tried to do in video format is demystify um, what that bill is. And so, so if, you take, if you could take three minutes out of your life to watch this video, um, we think it will help, under, help you help clarify what's going on in that bill and what you're charged for um, and how to compare it to previous bills, either last month or last year. Um, and then you can compare that with, you know, what the weather was and help you understand um, why you might be paying more or why you might be paying less based on your use. Your Burlington Electric Department electric bill will show you the amount of electricity you and your family use and how much it costs in your home. The electricity you pay for gives you lights, heating, cooling, and anything else you plug into an electric outlet at home. Your bill might change when there are more people living in the house, as more electricity may be used. Also, when the weather is hotter or colder and you use more heat or air conditioners. Your bill shows how much electricity you use in one day and over one month. Looking at the bill, you can see the changes in your use of electricity from last year to this year. KWH, or kilowatt hours, are how we count your electricity use. When you open your bill, you will see your name and your address. You have a customer number and a location number. You will be asked for these numbers if you speak to us on the phone to pay your bill. If you choose to pay your bill on your computer, you will need these numbers too. There are three important dates on the bill. The bill date is the date the bill is sent to you. The reading period shows the dates of electricity use that you are being charged for. The please pay by date is the date by which we must receive payment. You can pay your bill in different ways. You can pay by check. You need to tear off the bottom part of your bill Fill it out with how much you are paying and put the bill and your check in the envelope provided. Send it in the mail to us with correct postage. Do not send cash. You can bring your payment along with your bill to the Burlington Electric Department office at 585 Pine Street in Burlington. You can pay through your computer at our website. There you will be asked for your email address and bank information so that money will be taken out of your bank account to pay the bill. Our customer care team is here to answer questions and help. We will always use an interpreter if you ask for one. We are open Monday to Friday. You can call us by phone Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. or you can visit us at 585 Pine Street from 8.30 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. Right now, we, our video is only in English, but we fully expect that it will be in multiple languages um, by the end of the month. Um, and we're really excited that that is something that's going to be, uh, be available for the community. We're also in the process of translating a lot of really important documents um, on our website. We know how important it is for people to, to um, have access. We know that access is, is a foundation of equity. Um, and so we want to make sure that if somebody can uh, read and speak English, uh, that and they can get access to a program within a day. We want somebody who 
um, can read and speak another language to be able to have access to the same program um, in, in the same amount of time. It's, it's super important to us. Yeah, so that's great. We are looking forward to people checking out the video. And, you know, we talked about partnerships, like you mentioned AALV, the Family Room, CVOEO, but another partnership that you've been really cultivating, and I know the video is a part of this, is the Vermont Language Justice Project. Can we yeah. can we make a pitch? Yeah, I mean, you know, Vermont Language Justice Project, they're, they're I, I, feel, I believe that, um, that when people learn about this incredible um, resource that the world has in um, Allison and her team. I, I, I think that um, the more they are treasured, they are, have been taking, um, they, they take that, um, that uh, word accessibility and they, they take it to heart and they work with lots of different organizations to put out content in the community. Like it's, and it's such a, a beautiful thing. Uh, 19 languages, 19 languages. I'm not even sure how many organizations, but a lot of partnering organizations um, they work with. And um, yeah, I, I don't know what more to say except uh, to, for, to encourage everybody to make a lot of joyful noise whenever, uh, whenever they hear or see something about uh, Vermont Language Justice Project. Yeah, thanks, Ita. They're, to they're such an important resource. And, you know, I'd known a little bit about Allison's work, but you coming on BED has really sort of highlighted the important work that they do and what a great partner they are in terms of potential future video creation, yeah, too. Yeah, 100%. And um, that's been prioritized by uh, members of the community. I, I think that I want to lift up the role that um, not just uh, Allison and her team uh, that are that work for the the Vermont Language Justice Project themselves, but all of the translators that work with them. Mm -hmm. Because these are folks that are from the community, mm -hmm. that are members of, of like different, you know, Vermont uh, families, nonprofits, uh, you know, churches. They're, they're, they're our neighbors that are uh, taking the work that we're asking them to, to do and to make it applicable to, um, Burlington residents, you know, so so it's different having it's different than having a AI or a, or an anonymous translator from the other side of the country uh, look at some language and then translate it kind of verbatim. Like we're having mm -hmm. people from here look at look at what we're doing and in interpreting, translating it, um, but also lending. Um, lending intention and meaning behind what it means to be, you know, in Burlington. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Thanks, Ita. So, I mean, we can take this so many different ways. So, many ways. <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about the video. We've talked about um, the um, energy assistance program, the EAP, and the 12.5% off your bill and that work. And we can also talk about like tangible things like pole mounted chargers and yeah. car share memberships. Yeah. Um, maybe we should just make a quick, um, we should let people know about these pole mounted chargers that we're piloting. And, you know, oh, thanks, Kevin just pulled this up. So let's take a step back and let's look at Burlington's plan to transition away from fossil fuels. If you can, if you can forget all the verbiage you see, but just see sort of four key bars. The first one is efficient electric buildings. That's sort of, if we think of it as this whole thing as a pie shape, that's sort of 60% of the pie. The second piece is electric vehicles. You know, we've got to get people out of internal combustion engine vehicles. The third thing we need to work on, sort of the, the third slice of the pie, is tapping the heat that comes from McNeil generating plant, the biomass plant in the Intervale, and using that to replace fossil fuels at some of our larger customers, including the hospital. And then lastly, we need to think about other ways that folks can get around. So we really want to be promoting public transit bikes. We want to make sure we've got all the infrastructure, be it pedestrian or bike, to ensure that people feel safe and can indeed get out um, out of their cars. So, I mean, we just briefly mentioned the pull-mounted chargers. Maybe we can talk about how that connects to the second sort of piece of the pie, which is electric vehicles. We know that EVs are getting cheaper. We know that they're more used electric vehicles on the market. And we know that we have folks that rent, that are buying EVs, 
But one of their concerns is this idea of through charging deserts and because you might live in a rental property, not having access to home charging. So if you're sort of privileged enough to live in a single occupancy home and you've got a driveway and a place to put in a charger, but we know there are people in denser neighborhoods that want to charge. So I don't know if you, do you want to talk about the five pole mounted chargers that we're, we're testing out in neighborhoods? I mean, please keep yeah. going. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it takes a lot of money and space to, to, we don't want to take up parking or we don't want to take up sidewalk space, you know, to put in, um, to put in that type of infrastructure. But if we've got these existing utility poles, say, in the old North End, what about using that space and putting a charger up there, having an app, you click, the charge port comes down and you can charge. Now there's a lot to work out in terms of sort of how how things are gonna be orchestrated on the ground, including our sort of collaboration with, with the Department of Public Works. But what's really important is just to remember that um, we don't want just privileged folks that own electric vehicles to be able to benefit from all the good things that come with EV driving, including, of course, the cheaper cost to own and operate an electric vehicle. Um, so we want everyone to have access. And we think these pull-mounted chargers might be a way to do that. So we're gonna, we're gonna see. Definitely. Hopefully it answers some of those questions, right, about whether or not you know, I'll be able to make it through the next day on the current charge uh, on, on my car. Um, I think that it, that having these pulmented chargers partners really well with some of the um, energy efficiency rebates that the uh, electric department has released recently up on, on electric vehicles, not just electric vehicles, but we also have this new rebate that we're trying out this year, hopefully, that some folks might might find really exciting. It's a it's a rebate for folks who want to swap out from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles who are uh, commuter drivers or gig drivers or generally drive a lot of miles, put a lot of miles on their car, 17 and a half thousand, right. is that right? So almost 18,000, if you drive almost 18,000 miles on your car, you could qualify for a higher rebate than, um, than another, uh, than if you don't for an, another, electric vehicle, but we also have other rebates for folks who are wanting to replace their cars or get out on the uh, road more on two wheels, right? So we have a we have a $300 point of sale rebate on electric bikes now. I think last year was, in the past it's been, how much has been in the past? 200 bucks. 200, so it's more this year, that's exciting. Um, more this year, and it's uh, really cool to have some of these available for folks who are already thinking about uh, about how to make those changes and already saving money in order to make that those changes. I know it took me a little over a year to save up enough money to buy my electric bike and then to have that rebate on top of it was just a, a, an incredible relief for me. It made it feel uh, more, more affordable. Yeah, icing on the cake. And I know uh, when I look at the BED bike parking rack, it's, off, it's you and me usually. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've, got, we've got our bikes parked. Um, and so I think about, We've talked a little bit about public transit. We know we're working with Green Mountain Transit to transition some of their uh, buses, diesel buses, to yeah. electric. We've talked about the e-bike rebate. I mean, maybe we can talk about car share. I always love making a plug for car share. I love, I love me some car share. <laughs> um, before we talk about car share, though, oh, I sure. want to just remind folks that um, that right now we know that GMT is going to char start uh, charging fares in at some point in May, I, I don't know the exact date yet, but to remind folks, there are discounted rates for youth, for young people 17 and under, for seniors 16 and older, for passengers with disabilities, and for folks who are Medicare cardholders. It's a 50% discount on, on your ride fare if you are in one of those categories. So thank you, GMT, for continuing to do that. CarShare has a, is already an incredible program in and of itself, but they have this program called Mobility Share. Um, it's for income qualified residents. It has no membership fee and reduced driving rates. So, um, so if you are a Mobility Share member, you don't have to pay for gas, or rather, gas, EV, uh, electric vehicle charging in your insurance is all a part of your membership fee and and what you and the rates that you pay for um, for using the, the uh, your car share car um, 
I was at a meeting recently and I learned that most people use most of the of the uses for car share is related to food. And so we know that folks out here are really wanting to to kind of go to the supermarket to get their stuff to go um, maybe even to go out to eat, just whatever it is. Um, there are a lot of um, transportation partners that really want to support uh, folks and and their needs with that. Yeah, I, and I think it's a good reminder that you know transitioning away from fossil fuels is a job for everybody, is, and that yeah. like it's partners that car share that are going to help make it possible. And I do love this idea that we're working with CarShare to help them electrify to the extent it works for, for Annie and her team because, again, we don't want just privileged people to have access to EVs. We want everybody to sort of benefit and give electrification a go, and literally, I guess, and figuratively. And you can do that with CarShare. Um, I don't know, Ita, we could keep going. I mean, we haven't talked about the rental weatherization ordinance. We could save that for next time, maybe. Let's save it for next time and maybe invite a guest okay. to come with us. <laughs> Sounds good. You know, somebody who wears car hearts. Yeah, okay, right. It sounds like a plan. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is there anything else we've talked about, sort of your job overall, how you're literally going and meeting with folks, some of the translation work that you're doing, both um, sort of hard copy and then video plans for that? We've talked about transportation electrification, partners like CarShare, Green Mountain Transit, e-bike rebates, other rebates. Um, I don't know, is there anything that we should highlight today um, or should we save stuff otherwise? Well, definitely let's save stuff, but I, I want folks to, to feel like they can reach out to us. Mm -hmm. um, if you call our main line at the Burlington Electric Department, you ask for Jen or you ask for Ita, you'll get sent to us and we can have a conversation about anything that you heard today. Um, or something that you wish that you could, would hear from somebody from BED but you haven't heard yet. Um, if there's something that you need us to be talking about or need us to be thinking about, give us a call and let us know. We really want to know. Yeah, thanks, Ita. And actually, maybe I can make one last plug. If folks want to learn more about Ita's background and what Ita's doing at BED, we did a podcast with you when you started a couple months in. So more on ETA and ETA's background. If you go to Burlington Electric Department podcast and you scroll through our list of podcasts, you'll, you'll get a more in-depth interview with ETA then. Yeah, thanks. Okay, great. Thanks, ETA. This was great. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, and thanks to Kevin and the Channel 17 Town Meeting TV team. For sure. <laughs>